welcome to this squash and tomato soup cook along. Uh, we are going to be cooking along with you in real time. We're not skipping anything out and you're going to see the whole process and find that actually cooking this soup is super easy, super delicious. So remember you can always pause us um, and you can download your free recipe tree from town2.com so you can follow along with it and it'll give you a reference to do this by yourself in the future. Uh, so subscribe to, on YouTube to Tanity Supers if you want more of this and you want to see what else we're up to. Uh, let's jump straight in. So if you bring up your recipe tree, we need a large saucepan. On it. On it. We need some olive oil, garlic, garlic cloves, some olive oil here, two medium onions. get the soup on the road. So this is going to serve about uh, four people. It's going to take just about, uh, probably just under half an hour to do. Now we've allowed half an hour on the recipe tree, but it probably won't take that long. So if you have this, if you don't know how to do this, just squash the hell out of a garlic. Two onions, one slightly bigger and slightly smaller makes two medium. Cool, that equals two medium ones. The garlic cloves, if you give them a little squeeze like that, a little bit of a twist, just freeze it, freeze them right up and get a nice big sharp knife. You find the little bottom bit and cut that off. The rest should come off like a little jacket, should be pretty easy. Get rid of these bits, cut the bottom off, don't cut your fingers off, don't cut your fingers off. Don't with a capital D. So we can get that pan, get a pan yeah. on the heat and get some olive oil in there. Do you want the big one? A generous amount. Yeah, definitely. There you go. Thank you. A big generous amount. Let's squash this garlic. It's all good. Oh, Throw things sorry, on. just bang it around. Banging it around. Okay, so I'm gonna squash this garlic flat first and then give it a little shred like this. Keeping the point of the knife down. And being really careful with fingers. Get this in here. Okay. So a good amount of olive oil. Can't can't really can't really overdo it on the olive oil. I mean you can, but you can't really. You won't really, reasonably, unless you're filling up the thing with olive oil. So we're just gonna cut the top and bottom of this off. Again, give it a little squeeze and the rest of it should start to pop off. So yeah, just Alex is just keeping an eye on that temperature there. So we want it. We don't want to completely destroy the garlic. Um, you know, you want it to be hot and sort of just sizzling lightly, but also we don't want the garlic to start going brown, um, anything like that. So this onion is being not very cooperative, but it's cool because we're, we're heating up the garlic in the meantime. Finally, oh, there we go. Okay, finally out to play. All right, cut it in half. Cut along it. And then we just shred it again. Keep the point of the knife down. Gives you a lot more control over where the knife's going. And you can not cut your fingers off, which is great. It's good for us. Exactly the same thing and just shred it. It doesn't have to be super shredded because ultimately this is soup. We're going to liquidize it a bit later on. So it doesn't have to be super fine. There's one. Use the back of the knife. If you use the back of the knife to push stuff off the board, then it doesn't blunt the knife. And usually the back of the knife is designed to be flat for exactly that reason. So there's a, there's a little tip. Keep your knife sharp and make it easier to get stuff off the board. <coughs> So we've got a really nice big chopping board here, which makes things really, really easy. Um, if, if you don't, that's fine. If you struggle to lift it, if you've got a big one, struggle to lift the board over to the pan, then you can always bring the pan like this, just underneath the board and push it off like that. Or you can just see it as like your gym membership, but free, make you strong, <laughs> lifting the board to the pan the whole time. I am struggling with the onions today, so I hope you're beating me in terms of time on this. You're probably just like, yeah, Ben, I'm way ahead. Onions are already in the pan. Onions if you're way ahead, then props to you. Same thing, just gonna cut along it like that and then shred it. No problem. 
cut along it. Fingers are way out of the way. Shred it. And here we go. I tend to just wipe the knife against like that, and then you can just scoop the bits and hit the knife. Easily just got all of it in there, no problem. All right, so roughly four minutes. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get the herbs and bits like that ready. Bring them over here so you can see. So we've got a little container for our herbs and spices and things. Um, we've got some smoked paprika, which we're gonna put into some of that. So two heat teaspoons of smoked paprika. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it's been like probably roughly four minutes since it started going in, so we'll get this in here. There's one. Oh, we need to refill this. That's about another one. <laughs> so we're running out of this, but two heat teaspoons. What else have we got? Two heat teaspoons of like Italian seasoning. Now Italians hate it when you say that, okay, but it makes things very simple. And we put in basically just a hearty amount of that as well. So, no problem. You know what, with this one, occasionally put in a tiny little bit of like chili or cayenne or something just to give it a little bit of something. But just a very small amount. That's just to my taste, but you can do whatever you like. If you like super hot soup, then <laughs> you can put in whatever you like. All right, so. We've got about another four minutes or so from that point. So, we need squash. Um, this squash is straight from the field, so we're gonna give it a quick wash. Uh, so while Ben's washing squash, I just say that the, uh, while we had the garlic on, I had it on quite a low heat just so that the garlic didn't burn while there wasn't much in the pan. Um, when we added the onions and the spices, I turned it up just to sort of a medium heat so it's sizzling away. Um, keep giving it a quick stir every so often so it doesn't get stuck to the pan or start to burn. Um, but straightforward. All right, so squashes come in all sorts of shapes. I gave it a quick wash really just to keep the board clean, um, just because we don't want it getting uh, soily or anything like that. So th this is usually something that's quite hard to do. So it's a bit of a fuss, but it's worth it. So pretty much you want to try and cut it at the point where the first kind of shape stops <laughs> being the first shape and starts becoming the second shape. Does that make any sense? Basically, take that bit, I'm going to use my fingers like this to keep them away from the blade. Okay, we're going to hold onto it, but it's quite slippy, so you have to be really careful. But I'm actually pushing my fingers against it, so there's no way that I can do this. We want to avoid that. Avoid that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just carefully use a little bit of a sawing action and basically just go down it like this. Okay, we're, we're trying to take off basically as little as possible. But at the same time, we don't want to have any of the hard skin actually remain. Okay, I'm actually using my fingers a little bit differently with this one. But just find something that's comfortable and just work down it like this. Try and follow the shape of the squash. Just bear in mind that it's going to be a little bit slippy. Squashes are kind of funny like that. So a little bit of a slippiness to them. Okay, so just at the bottom there, you might have seen I missed a little bit. So again, I just kept the knife point down and just shaved it off like that. Okay, I'm just going to do the same thing, keeping fingers way out of the way and just cut it into a couple slices. And then we're going to do it just like the onion. Just cut along it first and then just chunk it. So this is really all about just keeping your fingers safe. Because uh, squash is like, squash is hard until it's not and suddenly you cut through it and that can be a bit surprising and you can chop your, chop your fingers off quite easily. So yeah, I'm trying to just, ah cool, do you mind getting the door? Yeah, no worries. Some more people turning up wanting squash and tomato soup, so, so pretty much these can go in basically when you're ready. 
So we're going to just drop these in here, mm -hmm. use the back of the knife like a pro. In they go. And now this is a slightly more difficult part. What's up? Soup is not going to eat itself, so we had to invite people over to have a little bit of a party. This is a great one for a party. It's like a crowd, a crowd pleaser. So again, I'm just going to... Ah, you know what? I kind of forgot. What did you forget? I forgot. We're going to take oh, the seeds out. Let's bring this over here. Okay, so this is just our compost bin. Basically, you probably find it here. You can't actually see inside it, but uh, if you just press with the fork, with the spoon here, you find that actually you can just open it up like this, go round in a circle, kind of like that, and you'll open up the, the thin bit of the squash, and then we can literally just be—I'm spraying it everywhere, but this should be quite aggressive with it and just pull the squash out like this. So we're going to end up with a hollow, hollow half squash here. Okay, that's probably about right. So just emptied out. No more seeds or anything else in there. Get this out of the way. All right. I got squash seeds on my phone. All right. So, same deal, same as before, keeping the fingers nice and clear. Just going to try and follow the shape of the squash. So I'm just going out around the outside and then in at the bottom. And we're going to check it later for the bottom to make sure there aren't any little bits of skin just like hanging on at the bottom there. So don't worry if you can see your missing bits like, like that, that's no problem. So on the king side, so we're just going around. Am I jumping ahead if I put the kettle on? No, we can get the kettle on. We can get the kettle on. I'm going to put the kettle on. If you've got a uh, glamorous assistant helping you then. Am I the assistant? I think I'm the assistant actually. No, I'm definitely the assistant. Assistant. Hey, but I'm the sous chef. You're handling the pot, right? <laughs> is that is that how they do it? I don't know. Yep. All right, so all of that out of the way. So we've got a few bits left here that I didn't quite get because the squash curves on itself. So again, we'll just keep the point of the knife down and just shave them off like this. See? No problem. Squash is all good. Same thing. Just going to be really careful. So you might find you've got a couple of seeds. We'll get rid of those. No problem. And again, we're just going to chunk it really roughly. Okay, so it really doesn't need to be anything crazy. It doesn't need to be super fine. It doesn't even need to be all the same. It can be a completely different mix of sizes. No problem at all. With these end bits, we'll do exactly the same as we did before and just chunk them like this. See that? So it doesn't matter that we've already got the other squash in. It's not fussy. Um, it's just, you know, it's all going to soften up and uh, a little bit of variation is a good thing. So we already, put, we already put the rest in a minute ago. No problem. We're going to add this stuff now. So we're cooking with gas, literally. Are you ready for the butter? Uh, where are we at? We're at squash no, and a large slice of butter. I'm actually going to add a little bit more oil because we've got a bit of an issue with it sticking. So we went a little bit hot to start with. So we could probably put a little bit more oil in it to start with. That's all good. All right. So just refer to that recipe tree. Keep, keep you ticking along. There's no problem. So okay, butter's gone in. So we've got about we've got about 15 minutes, and what we're going to do is we're going to cover it and let that um, let the moisture in that squash kind of cook itself. Um, are you good? Yeah, I'm just getting some of the uh, juicy bits off the bottom. All right. <laughs> so we're just going to get the place tidied up a little bit um, while that spends like about 15 minutes just sitting there. Um, you want to check in on it, so we're going to check in on, it, in on it a couple of times. And I've just turned the heat down a little bit. Uh, we definitely don't want to be kind of frying it or kind of burning it, um, risking burning it. So it's just about keeping the heat nice and low. Listen to it, sounds about right. It's just kind of sizzling really quietly, really comfortably away there. So we'll check on it in a few minutes and see how it's doing and give it a stir and stuff. But uh, in the meantime, you can just clear up where you're at uh, with, with like your choppings and putting some other bits away. Um, and we can get a really clean kitchen for the next step. 
So just keep us playing and uh, we'll bump the sound up for you so you know when we're doing the next thing. Money isn't real. It doesn't matter. It only seems like it does. Okay. All right, so we're just going to check in on our squash again to see how it's doing. Um, it's no problem with doing this every sort of four or five minutes. Um, it's all good. So let's see where we're at. Looking good. Again, just checking, giving it a little stir around. Nothing really sticking. It's all good. So what I'm going to do is just get my wooden spoon and find a bit that I can press on. Okay. So it's not breaking yet. So the main thing is the squash isn't breaking when I poke it. So, so we're going to keep it in there. We've got about another probably five or six minutes uh, to go before it starts to get soft. And we're actually going to cook this until it's soft. Um, so this time on our recipe tree is allowed at about 15 minutes allowed for this phase. Um, but actually, you know, really what we're going to be doing is using just the end of the wooden spoon and just 
pushing um, on the squash and just seeing if it breaks apart. Um, and if it does break apart, then it's ready. And if it doesn't, it's not ready. So uh, yeah, just check it, see how you're doing. Put the kettle on in the meantime. Um, so we just need, we're gonna need a one and a half liters of water in a little bit. Uh, so we've just knocked the kettle on and um, got that ready for the next stage. Other than that, we'll check in with you again in a few minutes. <laughs> are you a, are you a team? Right, probably about time to check in with the squash again. I can still hear 
Yeah, sounds pretty good. It's just a quiet kind of bubbling. Quiet cylinder that's going on. We're still good, nothing's sticking. Yeah. So let's find a little bit. Let's get that bit there. All right. Okay, you hear that? That means that we are getting through the squash, so we're ready to move on. So we already put the kettle on. We need one and a half litres in the kettle. Um, and we've just given that a boil, so that should be pretty much good to go. We are going to get two tins of tomatoes. We've got plum tomatoes. Uh, so 100 grams red split lentils. Like, we don't actually have red split lentils right now, so we're going to put in a tin of uh, pre-cooked lentils, which is equally perfectly fine. But if you have red, red split lentils, then pretty much you just need to rinse them um, before you put them in. And then you just chuck them in, because we're going to put everything in at the same time. Just giving these a little shake. So we're just going to go for it. Do you know to get the, uh, get the stock out? Stock, yeah, of course. So just hold this nice and low to the pan so that we're not going to splash tomato juice everywhere. And then keep this, because that is some good tomatoiness in there that we are going to make the most of in a minute. That is why the word exists. You ready? Yeah. Okay. One heap teaspoon of stock. Cool. One heap teaspoon. So now with these, which are nicely tomato-y, we're actually just going to rinse them out. And it's not a problem that we're putting water into here because ultimately it's soup. So we're just going to rinse them through. Swirl that around. Make sure we've used up all of the goodness from that. There we go. There's a bit of a uh, rinse there, we're keeping the kitchen nice and tidy as we go along. There's no washing up at the end, it means we just get to enjoy it, it's just the main thing. So yeah, like I said, we don't have any split lentils right now, which would be dry. Instead, we're using just a tin of pre-cooked lentils, which is absolutely fine, no problem with that. And again, we're going to give it just a little bit of a rinse, because there's not much in there. Just a tiny bit of water, make sure we get everything good out of that. Uh, just keep putting all this stuff in there. Ready for the water? Uh, yeah, let's go for it. So there we've got one and a half litres of boiled water. Now we're going to put in two level teaspoons of salt, uh, which is a good guide. Um, it can we, we can increase or decrease it depending on your taste. And if you put in stock, then that's usually quite salty anyway. Um, yeah, we probably, that looks about right to me. <laughs> we probably put in just a little bit more than that. And this is going to serve about four people. Um, it, it may serve more than four people, but it's about four people. Uh, so we put all those things in. And we're just going to give it a quick stir. Well, Alex is going to give it a quick stir. Um, and then we are going to put the top on again, the top of the pan. And we're going to give it about seven minutes, but we want it to be not like boiling violently, but we want it to be bubbling away and uh, doing its thing. So um, we need to just keep an eye on this. I've turned the heat up now because we've been adding, adding new ingredients. So we're just going to try and keep bringing that all up to the right temperature um, until it starts to boil. And we're going to drop it right back and just keep it just bubbling. Um, <laughs> And then they're uh, pretty much ready to go at that point. So this is a good time again. You see, we've been trying to keep everything clear and, and uh, clean, and that's a great way to do it because uh, it means that when you're done, all you can, need to do is eat soup, which is perfect. And uh, so um, the only thing really left to do is to get the liquidizer out. And as soon as we're done with this, I'm just going to keep an eye on this. So with this pan, I can actually see, although I can't see into it, I can see that round here, I think there's a hole. I can see steam if it starts to really boil. So I'm just going to keep an eye on that. We don't want it to boil furiously. We just want it to bubble away. So I'm going to get the liquidizer ready. Um, and uh, as soon as that's done, we can just liquidize it up and serve it. And we're done. Piece, 
So I'm just checking in on this to see where we're at. Not boiling yet, so just recover it. No problem. So we're just going to keep an eye on it. I can see steam. Ah, we're about there. Finally, that took a little while. Um, but when you're adding, you know, cold ingredients or like room temperature ingredients, like obviously your tinned tomatoes, and you know, we obviously added tinned uh, lentils as well. Um, obviously, that's going to take a bit of time to bring that back up to a, a simmer or a boil. So it looks like we're about there now. So I'm just going to reduce the heat down a little bit. Just make sure that it's still simmering. Again, you can hear this more than anything else. Um, or you can look for this little gentle kind of amount of steam coming out the top. We don't want it to be like blowing the whole house down, but just a small amount of steam here. And uh, we're going to give it about five minutes from here. Because it's taken a little while for us to get it back up to temperature today. But you can adjust that as you need to. You can't really overdo it unless you were to leave it for like 25, 35 minutes or something like that. <coughs> then you'd probably be overdoing it. But we're not trying to like um, cook, the, uh, cook the ingredients to the point where they're just falling apart. Um, we're trying to you know, cook them just enough so that they're tender. Um, squash, as you know from frying it, was already pretty tender and uh, we could split it apart. So that doesn't really need a lot more cooking now. Um, but we're just trying to bring the other ingredients into the mix with that. So. Uh, That'll be absolute. Yeah. So, <laughs> we'll just give it a few more minutes. <coughs> probably about five minutes from now. Yeah. And then we'll liquidise it. That's what we all came to see.
I think we're about done. Sounds good. Yeah. Murder. Murder. So, just gonna. Woo! Murder! Right, just gonna have a little check. I think we're probably about done. Yeah, that looks good. Lots of Lots of check. Yeah, I'm gonna have a little check. Yeah, that looks good. Lots of. Lots of steam bubbling away nicely. Looks like everything's softened right up. So I think we're good. So we're just going to turn the heat off and just bring it over here. I'm missing a handle from my uh, my pan, so I'm using my spoon instead. And just going to get this liquidizer. So I'm just going to work it around, make sure everything is completely uh, completely smoothed out, um, and then we'll be ready to go. So, dump it in. pretty good I can't see any more bits looks really smooth again I'm just gonna immediately wash this that saves us later from it drying on obviously if you have a different type of liquidizer and obviously that might be a little bit different for you um, with this particular type you can actually detach the part that does liquidizing um, it's a good idea to wash those pretty much straight away because otherwise they can dry inside and uh, it's much easier to do it now. So that pretty much brings us to the end. So we're going to start dishing this out. Um, I mean, we were just sitting back, you know, <laughs> chopping it up, reminiscing about the good old days and all that, you know, tracking my roots. Where I came from and where I'm going. Yeah, you sure. All right, so we're just going to ladle some of that out. Uh, so that pretty much brings us to the end. So, um, you know, obviously, you know, something like soup is not super picky um, you can um, you know get away with changing things or substituting ingredients it's really um, very versatile no problem at all um, so I hope you enjoyed that one um, so thank, <laughs> thanks for taking part in it and uh, yeah don't forget to download the free recipe tree from the tanatu.com website um, and that'll allow you to follow along it'll probably jog the memory for you to do it without this uh, cook along again um, so let us know what you think Hit the subscribe button if you want more stuff like this and you want to see what else we're up to. And uh, we got some soup to eat, and you do too, so we'll catch you on the next one. Bye.